Welcome everybody to Surviving Freshman Year. We're excited to have this panel for you uh, to answer some questions about the future after high school and prepare for life in college. Welcome. Now oh, here, let's get my screen. Okay, well, I'm so excited to have you guys here. Um, if you guys don't know me, my name is Alyssa, and I'm NSHSS's Community Development Coordinator. So I go over all things member engagement, and I'm really excited to help prepare you guys for college and ease some of your worries on that next step for you all. So first, we're going to meet our panelists, um, and then we're going to just look at some some things in the future, registering for classes, academics, housing, student campus life, campus safety tips. These are all going to be super important for your life in college. And we've got some some handy dandy tips for you guys. So first, um, I will be our first panelist. And um, if you guys didn't know, I recently graduated in 2023 from Oglethorpe University. So this is a small liberal arts college in Atlanta, Georgia. And I got my bachelor's in communications as well as a double minor in studio art and film and media studies. So um, that definitely kept me busy with academics. And, um, but I was also involved in some leadership groups and some sports in college. So I, was part of AST sorority, as well as ODK, which is a leadership society fraternity. And I was the captain of the tennis team. So if you guys need any tennis advice, feel free to reach out. And I joined in June um, on the NSHSS team last year. And I love talking to my ambassadors, some of whom I saw were in attendance. So I'm very excited to see you all. And I love playing tennis, going outside and playing my switch. So that's me. Um, so I'll give you kind of like a recent grad um, perspective to um, the college life. And then we're gonna get into Jordan. I'm going to introduce him. He is currently a marketing student at Central Georgia Technical College, and he's gonna graduate in 2026. He is currently part of many college organizations, such as CGTC Gaming Club. We have that in common. A member of Distinguished Black Gentlemen, part of Skills USA, and many more. He joined in NSHSS in 2019 while in high school, becoming a member of the Ambassadors, and once graduating, he moved to become a member of the Collegiate Council. He was awarded the 2022 Outstanding NSHSS Ambassador Award and continues to stay an engaged member of the organization. In his free time, he enjoys working out, skateboarding, and playing sports. Jordan, you can introduce yourself. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Jordan, um, as she said before, and um, I'm just excited to go through and um, talk about the college experience. I'm currently in college, so I'll be more of a, um, as it's going on in the progress, um, type of view. Of course, always learning. So, and we also have Mia. Mia is logging on. Would you introduce yourself, Mia? Hello, um, it says that the host has uh, disabled permissions to join with video, but um, my name is Mia Dent. Um, I am currently a second semester freshman at North Carolina a and State University, um, and I'm excited to be here. Excited to have you, Mia. So let's get into it. So first we're gonna be coming, covering um, registering for classes. We're just gonna be covering some kind of basic things because it's gonna be uh, dependent on your school and um, basically whatever your uh, college has chosen, uh, you kind of have to look into the registering for classes um, 
as per your school. So some kind of tips that you need are to know your student ID number. This is really important. And by the end of my four years, I definitely had remembered my uh, student ID number. And you're gonna wanna know your specific registration date and time, as well as your um, add and drop and withdraw um, regulations for your school. Additionally, we have some terms like pass, no pass, withdrawal, and incomplete grades that do not count in your GPA. So looking up these deadlines for these times um, when you can apply for pass or no pass or withdrawal or incomplete are super important if you're interested in um, not having a class count for your GPA. And then um, looking up the limitation of the number of classes that you can have for that. And if you guys, if any of our panelists have anything to say about these, um, feel free to jump in. Um, if you're if I'm good, um, I, I took a couple of notes on a couple of the slides. Um, for this one specifically, um, I have a couple of just important tips. One being we are um, registering for classes. It's extremely important you talk to your academic advisor, um, especially as a freshman coming in. Um, we tend to have an idea of the classes we want to take. Um, but uh, being like that's their job to help you um, get through all your classes and everything, they tend to have a better understanding and maybe they can give you good advice on what classes to take, what not to take. If you don't know how to sign up for classes, they can also show you or do it for you as well. And at my school, we were required to meet with our academic advisor before we could even register for the for the new semester. So it's always good to um to go meet with them. I think it's also important to know the, the ad drop week um, it's different for every school. Some have just a couple of days. Some have a whole week. Mine is a whole week um, where you get to like add and drop classes and you want to make sure that you have solidified the classes that you want before the end of the week. Because once that happens, um, if you withdraw with a class, um, there's no signing up for new ones or anything like that. So it's important to know that. And then um, and then also remember that when you do sign up for new classes to be very prompt about what your date, your date and time is because classes go really, really fast. Um, depending on what organizations you're in, if you're in the honors, sometimes they get um, uh, prioritized registration as well as for people who are in sports. And then lastly, um, just to remember what SAP is, it's something that kind of um, snuck up on me my first freshman year and me and some of my friends is, um, satisfactory academic progress so it has three things it has gpa which we know about um it has the completion rate and the maximum time frame the completion rate speaks on um how many times you're withdrawing from classes and how many classes you're completing so a lot of people think they can drop a class as long as it's before the end of the due date and be completely fine because it won't go on your gpa but that's not completely true if you're not meeting a satisfactory amount of classes completed, you can drop below your SAP progress and lose your financial aid. And I feel like that's a big thing that a lot of people aren't told about coming into college. So just make sure like it's okay to drop a class if it's a lot to deal with at the time, but make sure you're not dropping too many classes so you don't fall underneath. Yeah, I would say that I agree with that. Um, at my university, we also have a limit on the amount of classes that you can drop slash the amount of classes that you can retake in the future. Um, I believe it's like 12 credit hours that you have that leeway with. So if you are dropping a class, just know that if it is required for your major, you will have to retake it again. And so you don't want to drop too many classes or withdraw from too many classes and then have to retake those credit hours again, because at a point you will have a limit on how many you are able to retake. Um, also for um, in relation to registration, uh, I'm double majoring. So, and my majors are in two separate colleges. Um, and one thing I found with my academic advisor is that I came in as a political science student um, last semester. And so she was a part of the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. So when I wanted to branch into the College of Agriculture um, for my secondary major in environmental studies, she didn't really have much insight onto what courses would be best for me to take, especially as I was going to be starting late um, in the process for that um, 
degree program. So I ended up having to meet with the dean of that college to sort of make sure that I was going to be on track this semester so that I would still be able to graduate um, in time and be able to take the classes that I needed um, to take for this semester. So that's something that you may need to do as well. Um, but most definitely talk to your advisor. They will help you the most with figuring out what you need to do so that way you're on track for graduating on time. So um, those are both great advice, uh, both me and Jordan. Um, yeah, so one thing that's not included on this resource page is definitely your advisor. Um, and they will be paired up with you from the start. And possibly you might just have a first year advisor or one that's stuck with you all four years. But they are an amazing resource that you can ask questions to at any point in our that's their job. So they're excited to hear from you and help you and get you to the finish line. So along with your advisor, we also have other resources like registration calendar. Um, and so that's going to give you the dates of when you're supposed to register and what time um, based on what uh, your grad year, your intended estimated grad year is as well as the college catalog will show you what classes that um, you need to take for your intended major. There's also some transcripts that'll be either official or unofficial prerequisites and co-requisites. These are all things that you need to pay attention to if you need transcripts for any um, job application or applying for grad school, you'll need that and know where to access that. Final exam schedule, that'll creep up before you know it. I think um, you guys are in midterm season right now, um, and final exams are not very kind. Midterms are kind of like um, per, per class, I would say, but final exams are uh, where it hits everybody. <laughs> and so they've got designated blocks that um, you will have your final exam in based on what time your class is, essentially. And then these petitions and forms, increased course load, matriculation appeal. These are all things if you want to graduate early or maybe you need a less of a course load and you need to take a little longer. Um, these are forms that your advisor can help you um, fill out and see if that's something that you need in your life. So now let's get into academics. Um, We've got some comments, but uh, I'll let uh, either Jordan or Mia take over on um, on some some of their favorite academic tips for um, for studying, for campus life, et cetera. Uh, most definitely. Um, would you want to read through this first? Because I do. Yeah, like I can read it here. OK. Yeah. So um, um, we can uh, we have. Choosing your professor, I know some people are pretty particular on um, how they want to choose their professor. They have websites like Rate Your Professor, um, which can help. But I think the biggest tip that I have personally is asking your friends or asking upper upperclassmen who are in your major. And that's kind of just word of mouth on how the professor is. Um, and if you like a certain professor, maybe you want to choose uh, classes with them um, in the future. And then you want to kind of, when you're picking your classes, you kind of want to pick out where um, the classes are in regards to the campus. Um, so kind of cross-referencing between the campus map and your classes, your college catalog, um, to figure out does it take a long time to cross campus to get to this class or um, am I even able to get there in time or will I need to go take a break to eat? This is all things that you can kind of think of when you're picking out your schedule. And a little tip for your professors is to get to know them and kind of get on their radar because the more that you know your professors and your TAs, um, and the more that they know you, the more willing they're, they are to help you out and see you during office hours and um, work with you on certain assignments. And that personal connection is very valuable in college, especially when they have hundreds of students, whether you're in a big school or in a small school, they're still teaching multiple classes with so many people that just getting to know them a little bit, asking them their day goes a long way. And you can do that in office hours, but there's also things like 
study review sessions and study groups that you can get to know your own um, classmates and form them yourself or join them um, through a program through your school. These are all pretty helpful to, to just get more knowledge outside of uh, the classic class as well. And then mental health, um, I just put this one as a blanket statement because you should always be looking after your mental health when in school. Um, just kind of keeping track of how you feel and having an outlet for you to express your mental health and to to get positive feedback and feel feel good in your own skin because in, in the end, college is not worth sacrificing your mental health. And getting resources on campus are really important as well. They've got uh, counselors and um, other other things as well that can help assess that. And then time management. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of like a rule of thumb that you should probably take at least two hours of studying per credit slash unit. And this is different for each class or for each school because I had four credit classes so per each class, maybe study twice, two hours um, per credit a week. And so that's just kind of a rule of thumb. And if um, our panelists have any other insight on that, um, but the higher number of credit hours, it'll be more challenging course. So if it's a 400 level credit hour class, then you can kind of imagine that it would be a little bit more difficult and require a little bit more effort and studying. Um, most definitely. Um, especially with the, I do want to talk on the rate. My professor is huge. I've never thought about talking to, um, an upperclassman, which is smart. Um, but I, when I first started my freshman year, I was focused on time, time, time. I was like, I want all my classes back to back. So when I get out, I can go to sleep or I can do whatever else I want to do. And it completely ruined me because I come to realize that professors make classes and I feel like a lot of times you can kind of, you know, tough it through and get through a class majority of times. But a class, I feel like a professor can truly, you know, make or break a class. And you can tell when a professor really loves what they're doing and is willing to work with you. And then there's some more strict, more rigorous, more harder professors. So rate my professor. I feel like you should base it off the professor more than the time sometimes, um, just because in the long run, it will help you out. Um, I think mental health is a really big one as well that we tend to forget. Um, and in college, you tend to get sworn with a lot and um, you can tend to forget the important things like your mental health. And like um, like Alyssa said, there's um, a lot of things on campus, such as, um, you know, psychology and, um, you know, more people there that you're able to talk to, whether it be friends or graduation coaches. I think it's really important that you take the time to make sure that you're in a good headspace so that you can um, do what you need to to the best of your ability. And then um, for the studying, a big thing that I um, messed up my freshman year was that um, I would say I would get to studying when I can. And I was like, obviously, I would make time to study. But um, when you get on campus and when you get um, around the environment, you begin to do a lot of the things on campus and, you know, extracurriculars and stuff like that. Um, time management becomes a big issue. So one of the things I had to do was I had to specifically plan out study times, almost like a class. So I would have it like written down, like I was going to class from this time to this time. I would have to study from this time to this time, because if you don't, you can tend to, you know, make excuses or be like, I'm doing this today. I'll make it up tomorrow. And then you'll say, I'll make it up tomorrow. And then it kind of snowballs. It's best to just have a set time for you to do it every day so that you make sure you get it done. I I agree. Um, uh, I think that especially with like the choosing your professor and instructor is very important. I know that this semester, one of my classes that I'm taking is um, an environmental science course, and it's not the most interesting subject to me, but definitely my professor makes it interesting. So um, it is an hour and 15 minute long class, but I remain engaged throughout the entire time. And I don't think that if it wasn't for him as my professor, I would be nearly as interested or engaged in the subject matter. Um, 
planning out classes. This is something that I had an issue with last semester of planning classes back to back. I thought I could make that 15 minute walk during this 10 minute break into about a seven minute walk. Um, I could not, and not all professors are very forgiving um, of, you know, if you're a little late to class. So definitely like plan that accordingly. If your classes are across campus, try not to schedule them back to back if that is something you can do. Um, also know yourself. Um, if you're someone where you don't think that you can wake up super early in the morning, schedule those, you know, afternoon classes um, if you have the opportunity to do that, um, just because you want to make sure you're putting your best foot forward. So if you know you're not going to be able to wake up for that 8 a.m. rather than signing up for that anyways and missing those classes, try and sign up for, you know, a later time slot on that. Um, and last semester, getting to know my professors was very, very important. Um, I was able to get a lot of recommendation letters out of that, which is something that can be very helpful if you're applying to scholarships or if you're applying to internships, um, that uh, you need those recommendation letters and sort of being able to have this network of people who are not only going to be able to write those letters, but, you know, introduce you to other opportunities that you may not have been able to know about just because they know your name, they know your face, um, as well as if something happens, there tend to be a lot more forgiving um, if you need to make up an assignment or if you have an emergency. Um, I remember I got COVID last semester, so I wasn't going to be able to take my final on time. Um, my professor was very gracious to let me take it after. Um, I had fully recovered, um, which I don't know if I would have had that same opportunity if it had not been for me consistently showing up to class and really building that relationship with her. Um, and lastly, I'd say I, I, I'm taking chemistry this year and STEM is not my forte at all. Um, but uh, me and a few other people in my chemistry class, we were able to form a study group that has been going strong this entire semester, which has been really helpful, um, not only just for us to re review the concepts that we learn in class, but also as far as time management goes. I know that when we meet during the week, for this study group, that's when I can do my chemistry homework and complete the assignments that we have for that, um, which I don't know if I'd be as on top of those assignments if it wasn't for having that large support system um, with the other students in my class. So I say that that's something that's also important outside of getting to know your professors, get to know the other people in your class because they can be a really great resource as well for accountability partners, but also for um, a study buddy um, in the future. Yeah, those are both great tips. And I would say even um, some of your study buddies may be TAs as well, um, because students uh, can become TAs on campus once you have gotten to a certain point of excellence in that field. Um, teachers also reach out and see um, interest about the TA position. And it's really great to get advice from somebody that's your own age and um, kind of talk it in in layman's terms um, for you. I'm sure chemistry is a whole nother language, so it definitely needs to be translated from uh, someone who has a little bit more of a person to person thing. So yeah, let's get into some more academics, uh, some resources that we have compiled. So we've got a couple things here. Grammarly is one. Uh, Grammarly is super helpful and is useful in your life after college as well, but you definitely shouldn't rely solely on this. It um, You can plug in your papers or plug in any responses that you're about to submit online, or they even have programs that uh, are implemented into your browser that can um, check your grammar from there. But definitely read over it. Make sure that you're actually knowing how to have good grammar. Um, that's definitely very important. And then Quizlet. Quizlet's pretty valuable um, when you're trying to study for things like chemistry and need to get um, this fine-tuned matching together. And you can make cards, you can make definitions, and it's pretty valuable uh, in that sense. Khan Academy, Learning Assistant, and uh, those kind of things can help you out um, for just overall advice online. And um, it's better than Google than just searching online. It's a um, it's a uh, sturdy uh, resource for you to use. 
And on-campus tutoring, we kind of talked about TAs, which is kind of similar, but um, some campuses have tutoring programs for you um, in certain classes or even just overall. So I would definitely see um, about uh, which, which um, things that are offered for your university specifically. So we've got our first question. Is the workload in college different than the workload in high school? Let me look at my thing. What are your tips adjusting to this change? So we can start with, let's start with Mia since Jordan's been starting. Uh, I would say it absolutely is. Um, for me, I came from a high school where after COVID, homework stopped being for a grade. And that really shifted the way in which you know, not only that we as students thought about homework, but also teachers stopped giving as much homework. So most of the work that we did was during class time. So going into university where, you know, teachers and professors were assigning a lot more work to do outside of the class, it was now worth a percentage of your grade. It was very, this very difficult shift into now I have sort of two times the amount of work to do than what I was doing before. Um, I'd say that in adjusting to this change, one of the largest ways that I have, uh, one of the biggest things that have helped me is at the beginning of the semester, sort of creating a running list of every single assignment um, that is due for the entire semester based upon the syllabuses that are given from um, different courses. Um, in this, it has allowed for me to sort of have it all in one spot and then really check things off um, as the semester goes on, um, as well as, you know, with time management, sort of blocking out times a day in between my classes, like I have three, a three hour break here, um, I'm going to use this time to complete my assignments that are due tomorrow, um, or meeting with, you know, my chemistry study group to work on the homework that's due for next week. Um, so I'd say, like, definitely use your resources. Um, use that time between your classes, you know, going from high school, you have about eight hours where you're in classes back to back. In college, at most, I have four hours worth of classes with breaks in them throughout the day. Um, so those other four hours, like where you would be in the classroom in high school, using those to, again, complete those assignments um, that you do have in college. Um, most definitely. If I had to speak on it, mine um, would actually be kind of the, the opposite. Uh, what happened in my high school during COVID was that um, homework became more of an emphasis in high school due to the fact we had um, less in-person time. And um, because of that, homework became a big thing that um, we were focused on trying to get done just because it took so much of our grade. When coming into college, um, a lot of my professors were only more focused on the exams and the quizzes you took at the end of the week and stuff like that. So homework was more of a helping you learn, helping you get the information, but was never required for you to turn in or anything like that. And um, and in that regards, it comes down to a point of being disciplined and making sure that you stay on top of your homework and you're still doing it and you're still staying involved in class because, you know, we can all say we've made our own mistakes in college and when seeing um, that the homework wasn't as much of a, uh, an importance in class, um, you tend to like, you'd be like, I don't really need it today. I can fill it with something else I wanted to do. Or the, the classic, or I can make it up you know, when it's time, the day before the test, or I can just go through all my notes and figure it out. Um, you know, a couple hours before the test, I'm going to cram it. And, um, and, and in the end, it never works out. So I think it's just important that you establish discipline you make sure that you stay on top of your homework um it'll just be different depending on the class but sometimes a lot of the work you had to do in high school is no longer you know required in college and they just want to focus on the main things so it's just important that you stay on top of the small things um so that you're making sure that when it does come time for these exams and these quizzes that you know the material and that you're ready to go but besides that Oh, and I also want to say um, she she spoke well in organization. That's because, like like she said, you only have so many classes throughout the day. You have a million other things that are happening as well. I think um, either getting an agenda. Me, I'm an Apple Watch user, so I use Apple um, calendars just because um, I can. I, I prefer a digital calendar that I can carry around with me. Also, just because I tend to lose things. 
um, a lot. So I can, you know, I can access it anywhere I go electronically. So having some type of calendar or some type of, you know, whatever works best for you is important so that you can schedule out your time, um, most definitely. That's great advice. Do you use like a Google Calendar so, and connect um, it? I, I really started with Outlook Calendar because when um, professors or anyone sends emails, you can automatically click a button that makes it to where like it goes on your calendar. Um, but when I started, when I got my own Apple Watch and because I have an iPhone, um, it was just more smart for me to start moving stuff to Apple calendars um, just because um, I'm able to access and see it like it pops up on the screen. So that, like if I'm not thinking about it, I visually see it when I wake up in the morning that I'm doing this and I need to get this done. So it really just depends on the person. I feel like whatever, you know, fits perfect for you. There's a million different calendar things. I have a different thing for my my school schedule. I have a different thing for, you know, social schedule. I think it's just important about finding what um, works best and what you have going on. Yeah, that, that's that's great advice, though, both of, both of you guys. And I definitely think it's a big change. And a lot of um, high schoolers are really intimidated by that transition. And it's it's great to hear that you guys are doing well and have adjusted and everything will be OK when you go to college, of course. So let's get into the next section. So let's talk about housing. So we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about um, all things housing. So as a freshman, um, going into freshman year, it's a little bit intimidating to think I'm going to move away. I'm going to be far away from my parents. I don't know where I'm going to live, but they have many options, I'm assuming, for whatever college that you choose to attend. I know traditionally some colleges recommend that you spend freshman year on campus to kind of get that life balance um, situated, but we'll hear from our panelists after kind of whether, whether what their experiences were. But we'll do a bit of comparing for on-campus, on-campus housing or off-campus. So on-campus would include dorms, apartments, anything that's provided by the university um, for students to live on campus. Off-campus is off-campus and is not provided, doesn't really have kind of any regulations by the school and the school isn't really responsible for that. But um, most colleges and universities kind of provide a resource for finding these off-campus housing or on-campus um, kind of res life kind of portals for you to find roommates or things like that. Um, so social atmosphere will be pretty high on campus. Off-campus, you're a little bit more um, on your own and you kind of can't moderate it and the schools aren't going to assist you with that. So that's something to take into account. On-campus safety should be pretty high, um, while off-campus safety is not as regulated, and it will vary depending on um, where you are. On-campus privacy is going to be very low because there will traditionally be a lot of students, and um, you guys are kind of in an enclosed space, or you're in a hall where there are hundreds of students there. Off-campus, you should have uh, privacy, it kind of, I would say this one varies because depending on if you're in an apartment or a house, um, your privacy will be uh, dependent on that. Independence for on campus, it says that it's pretty low, but I would argue and say that your independence is pretty high on campus. Um, at least in my experience, um, I was able to create my own schedule and essentially just wander wherever I could go. The only thing that was tying me was um, the college schedule. And off campus, you are pretty independent. And this might be referring to just like your own bills or things like that. You kind of have to be independent with that. Close to campus, on campus is obviously going to be close to campus. Off campus, it's going to vary. And you're going to have to take that into account, um, the travel time that's required to go to class. So my last year, um, I was off campus. And it took me about 15 minutes to get to campus. And that's not normally a lot. But when you take into traffic, when you take into account that freshman year, all I had to do was walk outside. 
it, it definitely is a big difference. Ease of maintenance on campus is going to be pretty good because you should have a res life that you can just report your maintenance and get that fixed. And then off campus, it's going to it's going to be either low or very. On campus, they'll want you to have a meal plan off campus. You won't have access to that unless you select it. Bills will be included in on campus housing. And like I said, off campus, you're going to have to deal with that yourself. Lease flexibility, that will differ based on your own place, but you are not able to, to break your lease essentially on, when you're on campus. And on campus, you'll have some amenities and our panelists can kind of cover what amenities are their favorites or, and then um, on campus housing, it can be furnished, it can be unfurnished, but traditionally you'll get that uh, not pleasant twin bed. We we know that guy, so you might want a mattress topper or something like that. Off campus, you're going to have to think of those expenses that you don't normally think of. I'm going to have to buy a mattress. I'm going to have to buy a bed frame. It's not going to come with those things like on-campus housing is going gonna, is gonna to have. So do either of our panelists want to cover some of these things um, in, in regards to their own college? Um, I don't mind. Um, if I had to say something big off rip, it like she said, get the mattress topper. It's gonna change your life. Your back's gonna, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna love you for it. I promise you, it's life changing, and it's it doesn't cost too much. Um, but me personally, my first year of college, I was on campus. Um, I personally recommend being on campus for the first year, just for the reasons of one, when you first come in, the biggest social anxiety thing you have is making friends and I feel like being on campus makes it a hundred times easier to make friends the majority of the friends I made the groups of friends I made we were all in the same building we were all in the same building and we would meet at the lobby at the end of the day after our classes and we would hang out and we would play games and we would talk about our day and it was all because we we're in the same building so like in a way we all had the same struggles and you know we could talk about it and everything and it just kind of pushes you together and um allows you to make um friends easier as well um us integrating from high school to being independent i think um staying off campus requires you to do a lot more that a lot of people aren't prepared for just because you went from you know staying at home with your parents where you know you might have you know had assistance with your time management and what you were going to eat every day and like you know, the toiletries, like things you don't think about, like toothpaste and, and toilet paper, that's all stuff you don't think about. But when you go into college, um, those are now all your own responsibilities. And I think staying on campus eliminates a lot of that. You don't have to pay separate, you know, water, internet, and electricity. You just have one major bill and then they kind of take care of it, as well as a meal plan, which is a big one. Um, Staying off campus, you're required to figure that out. And you don't understand how big of an issue it is figuring out what you're going to eat every day until you have to do it by yourself. And I think having a meal plan just makes it a hundred times more easier to, you know, integrate into the college field and just kind of, you know, focus on what you need to focus on and then let the rest of that come later. So I'm a very big on campus person for freshman year. I think it's, you know, everyone wants a college experience and you definitely get it when you stay on campus um, your freshman year. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I'm currently staying on campus this year and hopefully I will be again next year. Um, and I'd say like, especially during that first week when all of the events are sort of happening and people are trying to make their friends and find their friend groups, you definitely do see that there is a concentration of people you know, throwing events on campus, um, people getting out, having their doors open, just like in your dorm and your residence hall, just kind of people walking around, like inviting people in, um, you know, meeting people in the laundry room, meeting people in the lounge when you first walk in um, your dorm. And I just think that, again, that's like to reiterate, that's one of like the best ways to make friends. Um, also having a roommate, if you have a roommate your freshman year, you know, not everyone gets along with their roommate. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I do. Um, despite it being a random assignment, um, but sort of that can kind of be like your first real like built in friend that you make when you're on campus, um, which I think is something that, you know, you can't really emulate if you live off campus um, during your freshman year. Um, 
And also, you know, again, the meal plan, you know, the food options aren't always great, but at least there's a food option that you get um, somewhat for free and that it comes with, you know, your tuition. Um, I'd say that one of the biggest sort of adjustments for me was, you know, living on campus and living in a dorm, you know, not having a curfew. You could you know, re realistically, you could be out of your dorm, whether that's in your friend's dorm or at the student center or just hanging out around campus, you know, however late you want to be. Um, so that was kind of this sort of like whole new world that was open to me of, you know, there's really no time limit on when I have to come back to my dorm. Um, and then I'd say like, lastly, um, as far as like maintenance goes, um, you know, you know, I've had my fair share of like maintenance issues, you know, throughout my time, um, especially last semester. Um, but, you know, they tend to be pretty accommodating. And, you know, if there's any sort of issues that you're having, both with the RAs or like the housing director um, or even maintenance, they're like really only one call away. Um, and I think that that's something that, you know, I, I really do appreciate it being my first time sort of like away from campus, being able to have those like um, figures um, sort of around that are able to help and answer any questions. Um, yeah. Awesome. Those are both really great tips, um, you both. I do have one um, additional little tip. Um, living on campus uh, and having, like Mia said, um, those people that are hosting events and things on campus, um, they want to reach you. So essentially, uh, freshman year uh, clubs and organizations each year have a chance to get a fresh pool of people in their organizations. And this is the most exciting time for them to get new people. So they're just as excited to see you as you are to see them, if not more. Um, so definitely take advantage of that, get to know people and see which ones fit in your life and see, learn more about yourself um, with each new interaction. I think that's the that's the overall goal of being in college is learning more about yourself, learning more about whatever you want to study and getting to know more people as well. So those are great tips as well. And there also are um, portals online that would help you find roommates like me. I had the random roommate. Um, those uh, portals are access uh, probably like the summer before your freshman year. So you want to make sure you keep an eye out for applying for housing and getting those first emails because I know it can be very hectic when you're applying for housing. It's keeping an eye out for those emails and for those links, making your account, keeping your account updated and profile picture, profile updated is uh, very important. So, uh, and we kind of answered a bit of this, but if you guys could let us know more about what living on campus is like. So for example, you take a step out of your dorm and what does your campus look like? Are there people playing around in the quad? Are there people in the cafeteria talking or are they more secluded? And do you feel like your campus experience is unique or do you feel like based on your other college friends, um, if, if your experience is pretty similar. Um, okay. I got, um, yes, I, um, I ain't gonna lie. When I first came out, I was um, very surprised. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening outside constantly at all hours of the time. Um, people are constantly walking. The biggest thing for me was that everybody was on a skateboard or a bicycle um, that's where I actually started skating from is that um, I was a little jealous because I was tired of walking to all my classes and I would watch people skateboard to their classes. So um, that following Christmas, I asked, I said I wanted to skate an electric skateboard and um, I got it and I ended up being a big skater on campus. But um, it's just it's always active. There's always a lot happening. Um, I feel like there's never nothing you can't do on campus. Um, I think it's also good because there's all types of people on campus. So you will have those active and open people walking around, laughing, people throwing the ball around, either on the green or the quad or whatever you call it. And then you have will have those people um, that are by themselves and might just want to chill by themselves 
I feel like in high school we tend to um to associate that with like not necessarily being cool or whatever. Whereas in college, because everyone's schedule is so different, it was never weird seeing or eating by yourself. I tend to eat my dinner, my lunch by myself, um, just by choice, just because I preferred it that way. Just because a lot of my, you know, my friends were in their own classes. So understand that um necessarily being by yourself from time to time is not a bad thing. People are not looking at you and judging you. Um, because we're all they're all trying to figure it out just like you. They're all on campus just trying to, you know, take it day by day. So just I think everyone experience is going to be unique regardless. Um, it's all based on the person, the interest. Like I said, there's so many people on campus that um I feel like no matter what, you'll find your group of people and you're you'll have your own, you know, unique experience. So I just say be open to everything. And uh, just be excited and glad for the experience you're about to have, because um, it's going to be it's going to be enjoyable. Yeah, I, I agree. I definitely think that, you know, while there may be some sort of shared experiences, whether that's with like a professor that gets on your nerves, I think for the most part, like everyone sort of has like their own journey that they sort of go through um, during their time on campus, um, living on campus, uh, especially when it's warm and when it was warm last semester, it was so active. Like when you would step outside, there's so many people outside talking, you know, especially at the student center, you tend to see a lot of clubs and organizations, they'll have tables set up, you know, always trying to get new members or just sort of share sort of like their message um, or, you know, their mission of, you know, their organization. Um, you'll have other, sometimes you'll have companies that'll come to try and recruit people for internships um, or, you know, will be giving out free stuff and free goodies and things like that. You'll have skateboarders skating, like, um, you know, again, from the student center, people out on hammocks and, you know, sitting like in the quad, like on little blankets and stuff. Um, you know, there's people who will use like electric scooters, which I am also jealous of those people. They be zooming the class and I'm like, I'm still here, you know, miles behind you and you already at your destination. Um, but I definitely think that it is what you make of it, um, you know, finding people, you know, who um, are hanging out and around campus and sort of joining them, sitting with them, talking to them, um, you know, joining the clubs and organizations, being a part of the events, you know, um, the uh, Student Government Association or the Student Activities Board um, on my campus, they'll try and do a lot of stuff, especially, you know, at nighttime. And, you know, sometimes we'll do things on the weekends as well, just to really get people involved in the school community and to, you know, get outside their dorms, whether that's like a movie night that they'll host like on the quad. Um, so I definitely would say it, it, is very, it is very fun. You know, you sort of really have um all of like all of it at your fingertips um, from the moment that you step outside of your dorm, even outside of your dorm room, there always is stuff going on in my residence hall, the activities that the um, RAs will put on um, sort of in the lounge as well. Uh, it's, it's fun. It is fun. Um, it is what you make it, but if you make it fun, it definitely, there's definitely many opportunities for it to be fun and for it to just be a great, a great experience. Of course. Thank you both for sharing that. It sounds like you guys are both having a great time and I'm very jealous. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got a bit of time left, so we'll get through these last little sections. Um, some last little tips. Uh, so for student campus life, make sure, like Mia said, people have some activity fairs to get to know the, uh, the organizations on campus Ask your friends what organizations they're interested in. And you don't have to fully commit it to an organization because everybody knows that everybody's busy. Just like Jordan said, everybody's got different schedules, different classes, and it's not always that they can schedule a time that works for everyone. So just as long as you're getting involved and being involved in the organizations that you want to and never regretting not being a part of one is generally a rule of thumb. If you want to be involved with one, just make the effort um, and make sure you can, you can be fully 
immersed in all of them or have enough time for your studies because that's the primary um, source that you need to be focused on. So, and then in regards for some organizations, um, if you're interested in any of these, uh, definitely attend an activity fair or look even on your university website for things like Academic and educational um, programs, community service. I had um, a fraternity community service um, thing on my campus. Media and publications. Uh, schools will traditionally have like a news system for them. Political groups, sports as well, student government, religious, co-curricular activities, and anything that you're really interested in they might have something for you as well as have that resource to create your own club as well. I know some universities do that and um, broadcast it. Um, so yeah, you can create your own, find a faculty advisor or um, look for things like that. So here's our last question before we get into Q&A. What organizations are you involved in currently and how do you balance that with your academics? So I guess we'll let Mia start since Jordan started um, this time. Um, so I'm involved in, I wanted to focus mostly on being involved in organizations related to my major. So um, I'm a member of the Political Science Society, of the Earth and Environmental Sciences Club, of the History Scholars, um, among some other um, organizations in that area. Um, and how do I balance that? Well, one, I had to learn that I couldn't do 14 clubs and organizations like I did in high school and college. Um, they definitely require a lot more, um, not work, but a larger involvement in the organizations, um, whether that's events that they run or if you are a member of community service orgs, they have, you know, um, activities that'll happen on the weekends or during the weekdays, um, which could be a couple of hours. Um, so you just won't be able to fully immerse yourself or really put your best foot forward in every club or organization that you're in, if you're in like 10, 12, 13, 14. Um, and as far as balance, um, as stated before, you know, they know that you're busy. They are students just like you are. They know that you have classes that you have to take. Um, I remember last semester I had night classes three out of five days in the week. Um, and most of the time like, organizations meet, you know, around that like five to seven o'clock time. Um, so I remember that I had to unfortunately miss quite a few meetings um, last semester, but, you know, that's something that they're understanding of and, you know, continuing to support and show up to, you know, events um, and meetings, I think, is something really important. But as far as balancing it, um, I'd say that, you know, at the end of the day, academics should come first. Um, so, you know, make sure that you are prioritizing those classes and that homework, um, but also, you know, if you know that there's a meeting that's happening at six o'clock that you really want to go to, completing your assignments before then um, or completing it earlier in the week, because most of the time you will know um, about any sort of, you know, events that are going on, you know, at least a couple of days to a week beforehand. Um, so I say just, you know, again, put your um, academics first, but um, as far as, you know, the organizations, if you want to be involved, you know, really carve out that time and make sure that you have done everything you needed to do as far as academics are concerned beforehand. Most definitely. Um, for me, like I read off earlier, I'm in um, the gaming club. I think it's important that you do um, do organizations in your major. I'm, um, I did something, I'm in the hospitality leadership um, club just because it falls under um, what I want to pursue in the future. Um, but I feel like as well, um, doing clubs that based off your interests is important as well that's because um when i started college i didn't really have as much time to game as as i like as i used to and um by joining the club it gave me the opportunity to um to start gaming again and kind of doing that on the side um with a group of people that i could you know enjoy it with and everything like that so i feel like you know be open be versatile um i also agree with mia make sure you prioritize um, what you're there for, you're there to get a degree, and um, everything else is extra. So I think um, 
just making sure that you know when you go into this, like I might have to miss a meeting. It's not the end of the world. Like everyone's been saying they understand that you're a student and sometimes you just can't be there. But um, just make sure, you know, to to branch out, open up and and just be open to new uh, possibilities and maybe um, try something different that you never tried before. Beautiful advice from both of you. Thank you, guys. So we actually are going to put campus safety on pause um, and get to some of our last um, Q&As. So thank you so much to Jordan and Mia for answering all of our questions that we had ahead of time and giving some uh, advice on campus life. But we've got two questions in here and feel free to send any in the chat. Um, any last ones? So I'll answer this first one. Will this recording be available for viewing? Yes, it is being recorded right now and will be posted to the past webinars page um, in 24 hours, 24 hours to 48 hours. And then our last question, how can you keep track of such a big campus like going from class to class and getting there in a timely manner? So... I could probably say a little bit about this. Um, I personally wasn't on a big campus, but one thing that I did, I think in middle school. So when middle school first starts, you get your own locker and you start getting this schedule um, where you're monitoring going to your own classes. You're not staying in the same classroom all day. And middle school was such a big step. You get your schedule and you post it on Snapchat or something and you're like, who's in what class or something. But that I remember was such a big step for me where you, where I went to, went to the school beforehand, before classes even started and timed how long it took for me to walk to each class across campus. So I think that this beginner level middle school experience trained me for college and when I first came on campus, I didn't want to try for the first time to see if I can make a class on time the day of. That's not really a good impression to have um, if you're late to your class and you're like, oh, I'm just figuring it out. I'm just seeing how long it takes. So I would suggest, um, and college campuses typically have freshmen coming in like a week early. So even if you're from out of state, you'll be there a little early where you can physically walk around campus to see how long you can take to walk from each side of campus. So that's what I would say. Um, I don't know if either of you guys have a big campus or any advice on that. Um, I actually stayed on a huge campus. And um, like I said, uh, one of the things I did was I got a skateboard. So just kind of like, um, you know, sifting out the area, seeing what um, what other people are doing. Another big thing that I did on my, the day before I started my first day of college, me and my friend, we drove to our campus and um, you get your schedule beforehand and um, Google Maps, because college campuses are so big, you can use Google Maps to find um, buildings. So they would have like the building and then like the, the letter or the number for the um, room. So we would put the building in Google Maps and we would walk to the building. And then if it's the day before you know, school, majority of them will be open. So we would walk in and we would find our class beforehand. And we would you know, make a, a mental picture and say, this is where our class is. So that like, even if you're running and there's a hundred of people walking around outside, you, you know, you have the general idea of where your class is. So kind of just kind of scoping it out beforehand um, can be really helpful as well. Yeah, uh, I I would agree. I did the same thing of sort of, you know, sh showing up and walking to all the classes, me and a few of my friends, we did that, you know, at the beginning of both semesters. But I'd say for this semester, what made it a little bit easier was that after, you know, spending a semester on campus, you kind of sort of know where most things are. So even if you are in new buildings in the following semester, you may have been in there for, you know, a meeting or to meet with an advisor. Um, so I found that I didn't have to do as much discovering this semester as I did last semester because I had already sort of had a rough idea of where everything was. Um, but definitely as, you know, you progress throughout um, your college years, you will sort of become more accustomed to where everything is. So it's definitely like a learning curve. Um, 
that, you know, should be able to be overcome pretty quickly. Right. Yeah, those are great answers. Um, so we have a couple uh, great questions in the Q&A, but unfortunately we're out of time and I'd like to be very respectful of our panelists' time. So um, if you guys want to give some closing remarks, Jordan and Mia, any, any lasting advice to our high schoolers that might encompass maybe some of these questions, answers? Um, my biggest thing is just um, come with an open mind um, and an open heart. Um, it's scary. Um, it is when you leave, but uh, I think one of the biggest things you need to understand is that college is not going to be a straight line. And I think a lot of people think, you know, I'm going to go from freshman to sophomore to junior to senior, and I'm going to graduate. I'm going to go to your workforce. And um, I feel like life has a way of teaching us through steps and um, everyone's journey won't always be a straight line. Sometimes, you know, it, it might have a slight curve or, you know, it might be zigzag and you might have hard moments here and hard moments there. But um, at the end, as long as you're taking steps forward in the right direction, um, just know um, the outcome will be positive no matter what. So as long as you just come happy and, and ready to, um, you know, receive the experience, um, I feel like everyone in here will have a great time. I I completely agree. Um, I think one of the biggest things is just be open to the experience. Um, know that it is definitely going to be something new. It's going to be, especially if you're going away for college as well, you know, you're really going to be on your own for presumably the first time. Um, so really take advantage of that and take advantage of everything the school has to offer, you know, join the organization's go to the programming, go to the freshman events, you know, during your first week, meet the new people. You know, if your RA is hosting an event, go to that as well. Um, just really take advantage of all the opportunities that the school presents itself to, because you never know who you're going to meet, what space you're going to be put in. Um, and sort of, you could end up having, you know, the greatest time and you don't want to end up, you know, at the end of your four years or however many years, um, because it's not always linear for everyone, but you don't want to end up at the end of the experience, you know, having regrets or wishing that she would have, you know, been more involved in your campus culture earlier on. Those are both great advice. Okay, before we wrap up, I'm going to show you guys a little bit. Um, so I know we do have some ambassadors in our group right now. Um, and here, let me, oh my goodness. But um, Jordan uh, was an ambassador. Okay. <laughs> in 2022 and um, has won that uh, scholarship. And I would love for Jordan to give some feedback on the ambassador program, but as a current collegiate council member as well, um, he's building his leadership uh, through panels, through NSHSS, as well as um, leadership meetings that we have quarterly. So if you want to give a little small uh, promo for that Jordan and how your experience was as an ambassador um most definitely I think NSHSS which always trips me up but um I think it's 100% one of those organizations that you will not get anything from it if you do not actively try to get something out of it um you know once you hit high school I think you're not you're not a kid anymore and um I think opportunities are literally everywhere there's free money, there's free opportunities, free travel, everything, but you will not get them unless you reach out. I know a lot of friends that, you know, they would see the emails about um, NSHSS and they would just kind of be like, oh, it's just an email. And um, I feel like taking that step and, you know, saying, no, let me apply and let me see what they have. With what changed um, my perspective on the organization, like I said, I won the um, the award and was able to get scholarship money for it. And that was only because I went out of my way to see what were they providing and what can I get out of this organization. So understand that there is plenty to get from um from these from the organization, but you have to be wanting and willing and actively pursuing um those opportunities. 
And I want you to do that because um, they're open to, you know, get you where you want to go, but you have to be willing to take those steps there. So just make sure you're being proactive um, and stay engaged and stay, you know, with the organization because um, they want to continue to follow your journey. Thank you. Yeah. And Mia is also a scholarship winner. So we love to continue to keep you guys involved. And as you guys enter this collegiate period of your life, um, being an ambassador is not a prerequisite for being in the collegiate council. So um, once you enter college, we're definitely interested in keeping your lifetime membership going and just continuing to reach out and see those opportunities that are available to you. So just keep an eye out for Collegiate Council applications whenever you um, join college and continue to stay involved. And we'd love to continue to be a resource for you all. So that's all we have for today. Um, we do have a bit of questions. So if you guys want to send um, anybody who has any lasting questions, you can send it to um, Alyssa.Merletti at NSHSS and I can either forward it to our panelists or um, answer it myself. So thank you all for attending and we're so thankful to have you here. Thank you, Mia and Jordan for attending and being panelists. Thank you. Have a good night.